The patient with an autoimmune disease. Overview of autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases occur when the immune system has problems fighting viruses, bacteria, and infection because immune cells attack parts of the body instead of protecting it. So immune system basics. The immune system consists of two parts called the acquired and innate immune systems. As a person grows, so does their acquired immune system and its ability to recognize invaders in the body and remember them for future immune responses. Acquired immune cells activate antibodies that attach themselves to invade invaders to be destroyed. Immune cells associated with adaptive immunity called lymphocytes develop in the bone marrow and specialize in protecting the body against any foreign invader. There are two major types of lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, which mature in the bone marrow, and T lymphocytes that mature in the thymus. Prevalence of autoimmune diseases. Worldwide prevalence of autoimmune diseases is between 7.6% and 9.4%. Immune diseases affect an estimated 4.5% or 14.7 million of the United States population with 2.7% men and 6.4% women affected. Systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE, and serosion syndrome, SS, affect females predominantly versus males, 9 to 1 ratio. Multiple sclerosis, or MS, is the most common neurologic autoimmune disease, and two-thirds of women account for all cases. Graves' disease and Hashimoto's thyroiditis tends to favor women as well. The most common age of onset of autoimmune diseases is 40 to 50 years. The etiology Multifactorial etiology includes a genetic predisposition for activation of cell antigen-specific T lymphocytes resulting in the formation of autoantibodies. Factors that may modify the autoimmune response include biologic, gender, pregnancy, and age, and environmental variables, infectious agents, diet, tobacco, and chemicals. Autoantibodies cause damage and dysfunction of tissues that are targeted. Some autoimmune diseases tend to co-occur and may have a genetic predisposition such as type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, RA, and thyroiditis. Connected tissue autoimmune diseases have higher comorbidity than other types of autoimmune diseases. Classification. There are 80 to 100 autoimmune diseases and the most common ones um, can be found in the table in this chapter, along with the organ systems that it affects. Various classification systems have been proposed and will likely be refined in future years. Organ-specific autoimmune diseases. In organ-specific diseases, the antibodies in T cells reach with cell antigens in specific tissues. Examples include gastrointestinal autoimmune diseases such as Crohn's disease, celiac disease, and ulcerative colitis. Connected tissue autoimmune diseases, RA and scleroderma. These two autoimmune diseases may also be systemic if they extend beyond their target tissue or organ. Neurologic system autoimmune diseases, MS, and myasthenia gravis. Systemic autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases is considered systemic when immune cells react to cell antigens throughout the body and in various tissues. Examples of systemic autoimmune diseases include SLE and SS. Both these conditions can affect several organ systems, including the lungs, liver, and nervous system. The treatment modalities. There is a wide range of treatment options classified into the following categories. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, glucocorticosteroid medications, immunosuppressive medications, therapeutic monoclonals, immunoglobulin replacement therapy, medications to replace hormones secreted by the target organs such as thyroxin and autoimmune thyroid disease. Connected tissue autoimmune diseases. These are diseases are diverse groups of conditions affecting a variety of organs. Most connective tissue diseases have significant genetic risk factors. A few connective tissue autoimmune diseases will be reviewed here, including oral lichen planus, OLP, RA, and scleroderma. Oral lichen planus. The cause of OLP is not understood, but some research points toward it being an autoimmune disorder in which the cell lining of the mouth are attacked by the body's own white blood cells. <laughs> OLP is a chronic inflammatory disease that affects the inside of the oral cavity on any mucosal surface as well as cheeks, tongues, and gingiva. The prevalence. 
of oral lichen -like planus. It's approximately 0.5% to 2% of the population is affected. OLP tends to mostly commonly affect women between the ages of 30 and 60. The etiology of OLP may have a genetic component, sometimes associated with other systemic diseases, is frequently associated with hepatitis C virus or HCV. OLP's clinical presentations, there are six types of OLP. Reticular, characteristic, Wickham's triae, mossy, lacy, white threads that are slightly raised, found on the buccal mucosa. Plaque-like occurs more frequently on the dorsal surface of the tongue and may look like oral leukoplakia. Papular, appear as papules on the oral mucosa, especially the buccal mucosa. Atrophic or erosive may resemble oral urethroleukoplakia lesion that is typically bilateral and symmetric. Ulcerative, similar to erosive OLP, but there is a central ulceration in the lesion. And last one is bolus, bulla, or a separation of the oral epithelial from the underlying connective tissue is present. The condition tends to have periods of remission and flare-ups. So the treatment of OLP. It can be def definitely diagnosed with a biopsy, which will also rule out the possibility of malignancy. OLP can be confused with leukoplakia and lyco lichenoid reactions, which have the potential for progression to oral cancer. There is no definitive treatment for OLP, and management of symptoms is the usual approach to care. When erosive and or ulcerative lesions are present, pain is possible when eating, drinking, temperature extremities, acidic, coarse, or spicy foods. Symptoms may be managed by typical topical corticosteroids for mild and moderate symptomatic lesions. Systemic corticosteroids, such as prednisolone, may also be needed for those with a severe outbreak of lesions. A healthy lifestyle of well-balanced diet, exercise, and stress reduction may help with flare-ups. Many OLP patients have deficiencies of iron, vitamin B12, and folic acid, so ensuring an adequate uptake and possibility of supplementation may help in this management. Avoid oral risk factors for OLP, such as beetle quid chewing, cigarette smoking, and alcohol. The dental hygiene care for OLP, avoid food and drink that aggravate it. Painful lesions may limit a person, patient's ability to adequately remove the biofilm. Palliative care for painful lesions may be required and include viscous, viscous lidocaine mouth rinses. For erosive and ulcerated lesions, it may be best to avoid toothpaste with pyrophosphates and mouth rinses with alcohol. Okay, the next one we're going to talk about is rheumatoid arthritis. RA is an autoimmune disease resulting in joint inflammation and ultimately destruction of the joint and loss of cartilage. Systematic reviews of literature suggest an association between periodontal disease and RA, possibly due to commonalities in the inflammatory process. The prevalence of RA in the United States is around 55% with 1.28 to 1.36 million people affected by RA and continues to increase. More than twice as many women are affected with RA when compared to men and the peak incidence is at age 50 years. The etiology of RA. The presence of, an, of autoantibodies, rheumatoid factor, can be found even in early RA. Genetic factors. Genetic factors determines 50 to 60 percent of the risk for RA. Family history of RA triples the risk for developing RA. Environmental risk factors. Cigarette smoking has the strongest association with development of RA. Other environmental risk factors include obesity, lower education level, high birth weight, and exposure to pollutants. Periodontal bacteria such as Porphyrmonas gingivalis and agregate Agregatibacter actinomycinidins may contribute to RA autoantibody production. Oh, that was hard, you guys. Okay. Clinical manifestations, or sorry, clinical presentation of rheumatoid arthritis. So swelling and pain in multiple joints for six weeks or more with morning stiffness lasting an hour or more. As joint destruction progresses, deformity and limited motion and muscle atrophy occurs in severely involved joints. Arthralgia is a nonspecific symptom that may be suggestive of RA. They may experience weakness, loss of motor control, or difficulty making a fist. As many as 50% of those with RA may have involvement of the TMJ or your temporomandibular joint, resulting in pain, stiffness, joint sounds, and limitations in opening. The treatment of RA. Early intervention is essential to limit destruction and progression of the disease. 
Pharmacological management includes disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs, DMARDs, are the cornerstone of RA treatment, and methotrexate is a first line DMARD. Corticosteroids may be used early in the disease along with DMARDs to reduce progression. NSAIDs may be used over a short term. Non fibrological management includes consumption of Mediterranean diet has been shown to reduce pain and improve the quality of life with RA. Physical activity includes cardio, muscle strength, flexibility, and neuromotor exercises is recommended and may reduce pain and actually improve the function. Weight loss for those who are overweight or obese and smoking cessation. The dental hygiene care for rheumatoid arthritis. Although more research is needed, non-surgical periodontal therapy to eliminate periodontal inflammation may reduce the severity of RA in addition to standard medical care. Adaptations for decreased manual dexterity may include power toothbrushes, floss holders, or interdental brushes, modifications of toothbrush handles to make a larger for to make it larger for an easier grasp. And also dental professionals also need to support healthy eating, weight management, and tobacco cessation. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about is scleroderma. Systemic scleroderma, also called systemic sclerosis, is an autoimmune disease affecting connective tissue associated with skin, blood vessels, heart, lungs, kidneys, GI tract, and musculoskeletal system. Fibrosis, or hardening of the skin, internal organs, and vasculopathy, vasculopathy may occur. There are three types of systemic scleroderma. Limited cutaneous systemic scleroderma, also known as crest syndrome, is a milder form of scleroderma and usually involves thick skin on the fingers and or face. Diffuse cutaneous systemic scleroderma involves large areas of the skin on the arms, legs, trunks that are thick and tight. Diffuse scleroderma affects internal organs and worsens more quickly than other types. Systemic scleroderma affects one or more internal organs but not the skin. The prevalence of scleroderma in the United States is estimated to be 50 to 300 cases per million. Women are four times more likely than men to develop scleroderma. Diffuse scleroderma seems to be more commonly in African American women. The etiology of scleroderma. Genetic factors leading to the production of autoantibodies increase the risk of developing systemic scleroderma. Environmental factors include infectious agents, drugs, chemicals, silica dust, and solvents. Scleroderma's clinical presentation. Raynaud's phenomenon is one of the first clinical signs of scleroderma. Loss of blood supply to the fingers characterized by sensitivity to cold and change of skin color white or clear on fingers. GI manifestations may include gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD, severe white weight loss and nutrient deficiencies due to malabsorption. Skin manifestations include thickening and tightening of the skin, sclerodactyle on the fingers and possible fingertip lesions, puffy and swollen fingers, fatigue. Organ-based manifestations may include lung fibrosis, pulmonary arterial hypertension, and renal failure. More than 80% of those with systemic sclerosis experience oral fa facial manifestations, which may include fibrosis of the facial skin results in a mask-like appearance. Hypo or hyperpigmentation. Microstomia from sclerosis of the lips and skin around the mouth reduces the opening. Tel Telangiectasias results from the dilation of small blood vessels in the skin and appear small red macular areas. They may appear on the cheeks, nose, lips, and oral mucosa. The gingiva may appear pale and sclerotic, burning mouth syndrome, impaired tongue mobility due to tongue fibrosis. Xerostomia due to salivary gland involvement appears in 25 to 71 percent of cases, increasing caries risk bone resorption, and TMJ involvement. Individuals with systemic sclerosis have a worse measure of periodontal health, including probing depths, bleeding on probing, and plaque index. They also have widening of the periodontal ligament that's common in radiographic findings and trigeminal neuropathy. The treatment of scleroderma. Early diagnosis and risk assessment to determine those who may develop new organ complications is ideal to manage progression of systemic sclerosis. Treatment will depend on the organs involved, so it can be quite variable. Pharmacological management includes Raynaud disease, calcium channel blockers such as nifedipine, ulcers on fingers and toes, intravenous IV, iloprost, um, phosphodistrase type 5 inhibitors, and bocentin. Renal, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, 
GI, proton pump inhibitors, skin and lung disease, methotrexate, cytophosphamide in progressive disease, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation in severe diseases. Non-pharmacological recommendations have extremely limited evidence and include physical therapy and regular physical activity, including stretching and cardio, may help keep the joints flexible, including oral facial exercises to maintain and possibly improve mouth opening. Dietary modifications to minimize GERD may also be helpful. Protect the skin from excessive dryness and cold by using multiple layers to cover the skin in a humidifier to keep air moist. Creams and soap designed for dry skin are recommended. The dental hygiene care for scleroderma include tight facial skin, microstomia, and TMJ involvement may make oral self-care as well as professional care difficult due to the limited opening and access. Due to the challenges in providing restorative or surgical dental care, prevention of oral disease is crucial. Xerostomia increases the risk of dental caries and management may include office and home fluorides. Keep the mouth moist with saliva substitute sprays, water, saliva stimulants with um, sugar-free candy and gum, and medications such as pilocarpine. Recommend xylitol products sparingly as they may irritate the GI tract. Avoid dental products with alcohol. Finger lesions and tight skin resulting in hand weaken, weakness and reduced grip strength may make oral self-care challenging, so a power toothbrush or other modifications may be needed along with more frequent continuing care. Tobacco cessation is also strongly recommended. The next thing we're going to talk about is gastrointestinal tract autoimmune diseases. There are several autoimmune diseases that have effects on the GI tract, but several primarily affect the GI tract through an organ-specific autoantibody. As in other autoimmune diseases, they also have a significant genetic component moderated by environmental factors. A, G a few GI tract autoimmune diseases will be reviewed in this chapter, including celiac disease, CD, and inflammatory bowel disease, IEP IBD, and Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, UC. Let's start with celiac disease. Celiac disease results in damage to the villa of the small intestine with exposure to dietary gluten. Inflammation and destruction of the intestinal villi result in chronic malabsorption nutrients such as iron, folic acid, fat-soluble vitamins, and vitamin B12. The prevalence of celiac disease in the United States is estimated to be 0.7%. It occurs more frequently in women and non-Hispanic whites. Celiac disease is five times more common in individuals living in northern latitudes of 35 degrees to 39 degrees of the United States versus southern latitudes. This can be related to differences in vitamin D level, which is involving modulating the immune response to NCD. The etiology of CD, genetic predisposition. A first degree family member increases the risk of CD as does having more than one family member with CD. Environmental factors, gluten is the primary trigger. CD is more common in individuals with type one diabetes. Higher education level and socioeconomic status are associated with CD. However, the reason for this associate for the, the reason for this association is unclear. Clinical presentation of CD. Some, some individuals have no symptoms. GI symptoms include diarrhea, steroria, weight loss, bloating, flatulence, and abdominal pain. Oral symptoms may include oral aphthous ulcers and discolored teeth or development enamel and the abnormalities. Non-GI abnor abnormalities may include abnormal liver function test, iron deficiency anemia, bone disease, skin disorders, thyroid disease, and many other atypical manifestations. The treatment of celiac disease. The only effective treatment is a gluten-free diet. Dietary sources of gluten include wheat, barley, rye, and sometimes oats, depending on processing. Referral to a registered dietitian nutritionist specializing in CD is recommended. Management of long-term consequences such as low bone mass. The dental hygiene care for CD. Children with enamel defects and aphthous ulcers should be referred for evaluation for possibly undiagnosed CD. Little research has been done on recurrent aphthous ulcers, RAU, in adults with CD but patients with RAU may want to be evaluated for possible CD. Malabsorption of nutrients may result in angular colosis glossitis, so continued support for a healthy diet should always be provided by the dental hygienist. In children, malabsorption may result in delayed growth, including tooth eruption and malocclusion, so they may need a referral for an orthodontic evaluation. Typically, dental products do not contain gluten, but care should be taken to ensure gluten-free products are used. Palliative treatment of oral lesions with mouth rinses containing lidocaine and possibly topical steroids. Assist the patient in tobacco cessation.
The next gastro, gastrointestinal tract autoimmune disease we're going to talk about is Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is a chronic, progressive, destructive, inflammatory condition impacting any part of the GI tract from the mouth to the anus. The prevalence estimates in the United States are that 1.3% or about 3 million individuals have a diagnosis of Crohn's disease, slight higher prevalence in women, and more common in those of Ashkenazi's Jewish origin. The etiology of Crohn's disease is genetic predisposition. 10 to 25% of those with Crohn's disease have a first degree relative diagnosed with the disease. Environmental triggers include smoking, not only doubles the risk of Crohn's disease, but may also lead to a more aggressive form of this disease. Antibiotic use increases the odds nearly threefold of developing Crohn's disease. Oral contraceptives. Diet triggers seem to include high animal protein intake and high linoleic and intake, which may impact the gut microbiome. Protective factors include breastfeeding for at least 12 months seem to provide a protective effect. High dietary zinc, fiber, and fish intake. The clinical, manifest press, <laughs> the clinical presentation of Crohn's disease. The hallmark symptoms include abdominal pain, chronic diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, weight loss, growth failure in children and adolescents, fever, fatigue. Fatigue may be a result of anemia or other nutrient deficiencies along with the effect from the body of trying to manage the inflammation and then iron deficiency. Extra intestinal manifestations may include osteonecrosis, me metabolic bone disease, and ankylosing spondylitis. Oral facial manifestations include diffuse label and buccal swelling, hyperplastic plaques on the buccal mucosa with a cobblestone appearance, mucosal tissue tags, deep linear ulcerations, aphthous ulcers, which are shallow, round, or oval, as compared to the linear ulcerations previously mentioned. Prevalence of periodontitis may be higher, angular colitis or glossitis due to nutritional deficiencies. Crohn's disease may be associated with other autoimmune diseases, um, such as CD, RA, and MS. Bowel obstructions may also occur and require surgical intervention. The treatment of Crohn's disease depends on the severity, location, and subtype of Crohn's disease, and it can be complex. Remission and maintenance of remission is a goal of the treatment. Pharmacological therapies include methotrexate, azithropine, and c mercaptoprine may be used for active Crohn's disease. Biologic therapies like anti-tumor necrosis factor, anti-NTNF, have been most effective in moderate to severe Crohn's disease and in maintenance. Surgical interventions. 80% of those with long-term Crohn's disease will require surgery, and many may require multiple surgeries over their lifetime. The dental hygiene care for individuals with Crohn's disease. Avoid the use of NSAIDs as they may exacerbate disease activity. Encourage and assist in tobacco cessation. Quality of life may be impacted by stress and anxiety and depression in those with IBD. And referral to mental health specialists may be necessary. Working closely with the interprofessional team providing care is important to manage oral health given to the complexity of the disease. Dietary assessment and counseling may be indicated if frequency of sugar intake impacts carries risk and support adequate intake of nutrients. Palliative treatment of oral lesions as needed to relieve pain, with, which may include a topical agent or mouth rinse with lidocaine and or topical steroids. Management of oral biofilm is essential to manage caries and periodontal risk. Optimal use of home and office fluorides to manage caries risk. All right, next, ulcerative colitis. UC is an autoimmune IBD uh, affecting primarily the colon. Prevalence, more common in industrialized countries, particularly North America and Western Europe. The prevalence is about 7.6 to 245 cases per 100,000 per year. It tends to present during the 20s and 30s. Slightly more common in men, and its etiology is a genetic disposition. Family history increases the risk 10 to 15 fold. More common in those of Jewish origin. Environmental risk factors include alterations in the gut microbiome, possible infectious agents, being a former smoker, hormone replacement therapy and oral contraceptive use, higher dose and long-term use of NSAs. Protective factors include Breastfeeding for at least 12 months appears to reduce the risk. High intake of omega-3 fatty acids. The clinical presentation for ulcerative colitis. Intestinal symptoms include bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain, and cramps. Extra intestinal manifestations may include colitis-associated arthritis is the most common, skin lesions, liver conditions including portal hypertension and cirrhosis, optic neuritis, osteoporosis, reduced growth in children, increased risk for colorectal cancer.
Oral facial manifestations include pyostomatitis, uh, vegetans, which consist of multiple small yellow and white pustules on an erythematous and edematous mucosal base, aphthous ulcers. Gingivitis and periodontitis, impossible taste changes. The treatment is, it depends on the severity and the extent of the disease and can continues to involve. Pharmacological therapy, mild to moderate UC, medications such as oral amylocytes, topical mesalaminine, or topical steroids. With more extensive mild to moderate UC, the following may be used. Corticosteroids, IV monoclonal antibody to TNF. Severe UC, IV steroids, and colectomy may be necessary if pharmacological approaches fail or if the patient experiences toxicity. Surgical treatment may be required and non-pharmacological recommendations monitor for depression and anxiety. Increased risk for cancers including colon, cervical, melanoma, and non-melanoma require regular screenings. Monitor bone health for steroid-induced osteoporosis. It is important for an individual with UC to keep their vaccinations current due to immunosuppression. The dental hygiene care for ulcerative colitis, palliative treatment for oral lesions to help reduce discomfort, that is 2% viscous glidocaine or steroid gel, avoid prescribing NSAIDs as they may trigger flare-ups of the UC, education to enhance dental biofilm removal along with regular preventive services and periodontal maintenance are essential due to increased risk for periodontal disease. Neurologic system to autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune conditions affect the central nervous system, which may include the brain, spinal cord, and or peripheral nervous system. Multiple sclerosis. MS is a chronic demyelating disease of the central nervous system characterized by progressive disability with motor, sensory, cognitive, and emotional changes. The prevalence of multiple sclerosis. It affects an estimated 100 per 100,000 persons in the United States and 2 to 3 million worldwide. The prevalence tends to be higher in North American and Northern European countries. Usually adult onset between 20 and 50 years of age may occur in children up to age 18 and older adults as well. Prevalence higher among Caucasians. However, in Hispanic and Black Americans with MS, the disease tends to progress faster. High adence, higher incidences in females than in males. The etiology of multiple sclerosis. Genetic predisposition has a significant role in the development of MS. Environmental factors, vitamin D deficiency, obesity in early life results in a, in a two-fold increase in risk, smoking, exposure to infectious agents. Clinical presentation of multiple sclerosis. There are four clinical forms of MS and relapsing remitting accounts for 85% of the cases. Relapsing remitting, acute episodes worsening with some recovery over weeks to months with no change in neurological functioning between attacks. Secondary progressive. Gradual neurologic deterioration with or without superimposed acute relapses in patient. Primary progressive, gradual, nearly continuous neurologic deterioration from onset of symptoms, and then progressive relapsing, gradual neurologic deterioration from the onset of symptoms, but with subsequent superimposed relapses is uncommon. Symptoms. MS can affect any area of the brain, optic nerve, or spinal cord, and cause a wide variety of neurological signs and symptoms. Symptoms fluctuate in several years may elapse between bouts of symptoms. Symptoms may include initial symptoms often fluctuate, transient difficulty in coordination, tremor, and fatigue. May have a sudden onset with paralysis or marked weakness or one or more extremity. Sensory changes, changes in bowel and bladder function, involuntary motion of the eye, or nystagmus, and the individual may later become partially or completely blind. Speech disorders, dysarthria, impossible loss of speech in the advanced stages. Changes in the muscular coordination and gait, loss of balance and spasms. Susceptibility to infection, particularly upper respiratory, cognitive impairment, and then depression. Orofacial manifestations, TMJ disorder, facial palsy, trigeminal neuralgia usually is bilateral. Dysphagia, in females there is the, there is twice the risk of periodontal disease. Immunosuppressants may result in aphthous ulcers and opportunistic infections such as candida. Course of disease, relapse and remissions. An attack may last several days or weeks and be followed by a symptom-free period. The condition worsens with each relapse. The longevity, close to normal lifespan, approximately 80% have functional limitations after 15 years. The treatment, Diagnosis is based on history, clinical imaging, magnetic reasoning imaging, 
MRI, and laboratory findings. Prompt diagnosis and early treatment are crucial for, for to determine neurological damage. Pharmacological therapy includes a wide range of medications, but only eight have been U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved. Although some disease-modifying medications such as steroids are used, there is no evidence supporting their effectiveness in reducing their prognosis of MS. In addition, medications to treat various symptoms such as bladder dysfunction may be required. Non-pharmacologic recommendations include exercise, physio physiotherapy, and hydrotherapy. Occupational therapy may be necessary to assist in management of activities of daily living and disability if the disability progresses. Cognitive and behavioral therapy, tobacco cessation, vitamin D supplementation as needed to bring levels to normal. A plant-based anti-inflammatory diet, rich in vegetables, fruit, whole grains, low-fat dairy, high-fiber foods, lean proteins, and omega-3 fatty acids is suggested. Maintenance of a healthy weight and management of mental health and stress. Some individuals with MS will try alternative medication approaches and special diets that may not have good evidence or uh, benefit and may cause harm, such as malnutrition. So the dental hygiene care for multiple sclerosis. Factors to consider when planning dental hygiene care for a patient with MS include medical consultation needs to be first set up to determine patient's readiness for dental care. And immunosuppressants and other MS medications used may result in neutropenia, so a white blood cell count is essential prior to care. If a patient has been on steroids over a long term, they may need additional steroids to prevent an adrenal crisis. Palliative treatment for symptoms relief for oral lesions such as mouth rinse with viscous lidocaine and topical steroid agent. Oral facial manifestations such as intermittent headaches, facial pain, numbness, palsy, and spasms. Oral self-care education will need to be individualized based on patient needs and oral condition. Visual disturbances and changes in motor function may impact the ability to adequately manage dental file film. Prevention will be recommended based on risk for, for oral disease such as home and office fluorides and diet counseling. Oral and systemic effects of medication used for treatment may require management such as candidiasis. The increased risk for periodontal disease may require more frequent continuing care appointments, particularly if the patient is having issues with motor functions. Myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune neuromuscular disease characterized by weakness and abnormal uh, fragility due to defective transmission of nerve impulses to the skeletal muscles. The prevalence of myasthenia gravis um, of individuals with the condition is, is around 200 per million individuals in the United States. Early onset before the age of 50 years tends to occur more frequently in, in women. Between ages 50 and 60, there is no difference in gender, but in those over age 60, the condition is more common in men. The etiology of myasthenia gravis is a genetic predisposition, and there are no known risk. The clinical presentation for myasthenia gravis general symptoms include weakness of the eye movements with double vision, diplopia, and drooping eyelids, ptosis, may be initial indicators. In certain patients, the disease may not progress further. If the disease is generalized, it will involve muscles of the face, mastication and tongue leading to swallowing difficulties, dysphagia, and lack of facial expression. Disturbed speech and expression with a weak voice that sounds tired and muffled are typical. When the muscles of respiration become involved, serious respiratory complications can result. May be associated with other immune diseases such as hyperthyroidism and Hashimoto disease. Myasthenic crisis. Myasthenic crisis is life-threatening and impacts the ability to swallow and respiratory muscles. This is an emergency and 911 must be called immediately and basic life support provided until medical assistant arrives. The treatment for myasthenia gravis. Pharmacological. Therapy may include anticholinergic agents are used to improve neuromuscular transmission and increase muscle strength. Immunosuppressive medications include corticosteroids, azithropine when corticosteroids are contraindicated, and cyclosporine. Surgical treatment. Therapy for attempting to induce remission can include surgical removal of the thymus gland, particularly if a tumor of the gland develops and drug therapy is ineffective. The dental hygiene care for myasthenia gravis. Factors to consider when planning dental hygiene care for the patient with myasthenia gravis include a schedule short dental and dental hygiene appointments in the morning when the patient may not be as fatigued. Consultation with the medical provider may be necessary to determine the safety in providing care for the patient. Use anxiety management strategies to keep the patient calm to minimize the risk of myasthenic crisis. 
Wrist for choking may require adjustment of the dental chair to a semi-right position and minimal use of water to avoid aspiration. A mouth prop may be held, held help the individual who has difficulty holding the mouth open for treatment. Allow for rest periods. Speech difficulties may compromise the patient's ability to communicate. Because of the lack of facial expression, distress may be difficult for the patient to convey. Due to fatigue and muscle weakness, the patient may have difficulty performing adequate dental biofilm removal. A power toothbrush and dividing the mouth into multiple sessions when performing oral self-care may be helpful. The patient may need to support the hand with the toothbrush, either by leaning on the counter or possibly an assistive device of which a number are available. More frequent preventive care may be needed depending on the patient's motor abilities and oral health status. Systemic autoimmune diseases. In systemic autoimmune diseases, autoantibodies affect various tissues throughout the body causing destruction. Trojan syndrome. Trojan syndrome SS is a chronic systemic autoimmune disease in which autoantibodies attack healthy cells in the exocrine glands followed by many other organs. Exocrine glands are responsible for producing moisture for the mouth, eyes, nose, throat, and skin. The prevalence of SS globally is estimated to be 62 per 1,000 individuals. The ratio of female to male individuals with SS is 10, 72 to 1. Etiology, genetic predisposition, 20-fold higher risk for SS if the first-degree relative is affected. Environmental trigger, environmental infections of the glands such as HCV and Epstein-Barr virus. Clinical presentation, glandular manifestations include dry eyes, parotid enlargement, dry mouth, xerostomia, reduced quantity and quality of saliva, and angular colitis. Extra glandular manifestations include lungs, recurrent bronchitis or pneumonia, pulmonary fibrosis, and chronic dry mouth, cough, kidney, glomerulophritis, liver, skin, xeroderma, dry skin, urticaria, rashes, rheumatologic, rheumatologic, myelagia, muscle pain, arthralgia, joint pain, and Raynaud's phenomenon, peripheral neuropathy, GI, esophageal dysmotility, GERD, fatigue, Dental manifestations increase caries risk, increase biofilm accumulation with higher numbers of cariogenic bacteria, and oral candidiasis. The treatment. Pharmacologic therapy may include artificial tears, saliva gels, ointments. DMARDs may include methotrexin, short or long-term corticosteroids, hydrochloroquine, um, and cyclosporine. Biologic therapies such as TNFA inhibitors. Non-pharmacological recommendations may include physical activity to reduce fatigue. The dental hygiene care for SS. An interprofessional approach to care is needed to manage SS and improve the patient's quality of life. Oral self-care education to aid the patient in developing optimum dental biofilm removal is crucial to manage the risk for the oral disease. Assess dietary intake and counsel on minimizing intake of fermentable carbs, particularly between meals. Recommend sugar-free chewing gum, mints, and hard candy containing xyl xylitol for salivary stimulation. Saliva substitutes with glycerol may help the mouth feel moist. Encourage the patient to carry a water bottle to aid in relieving mouth dryness. Antifungal rinses and lozenges for oral candidiasis. Recommend at-home fluoride therapy, which may include rinses and gels. Custom fluoride trays and mouth guards may also be considered. Avoid use of toothpaste and pyrophosphates or sodium lauryl sulfate. Antimicrobial rinses such as chlorhexidine may aid in managing caries. Non-fluoride remineralizing prep preparations with calcium phosphate may aid in reducing caries risk. And more frequent containing continuing care may be required to maintain oral health. All right, last one we're going to talk about is systemic lupus erythematosus. SLE is a chronic autoimmune disease causing widespread inflammation, which can affect internal organs and glands by causing tissue damage. The prevalence globally varies from 9 to 241 per 1,000 individuals. In the United States, prevalence varies from 80 to 103 per 100,000 individuals. In some populations like American Indian and Alaskan Native groups, the prevalence is 178 per 100,000. The female to male ratio varies across the lifespan from 7 to 15 to 1. Hispanic and Southeast Asian populations tend to experience more severe disease and organ damage. The etiology, genetic predisposition, imparts about 40% to 50% of the risk of SLE. Environmental factors include smoking, endometriosis, moderate alcohol consumption, more than five grams or half a drink per day, silica exposure, possible environmental triggers needing more research include low vitamin D status, air pollutants, 
diet impact on the gut microbiome, and infectious agents such as Epstein-Barr virus. Clinical presentation of SLE. Skin manifestations include the butterfly-shaped rash on the nose and cheeks, the malar rash, urethema on the skin exposes sun, photosensitivity, alopecia, hair loss, and Raynaud's phenomenon. Oral lesions may include oral discoid lesion, petechiae-like lesion, gingival bleeding such as disquamative gingivitis, erosive mucosal lesions in as many as 40% of individuals, arthritis, joint pain, tenderness, swelling, and morning stiffness, lung involvement, pleuritis, renal disorder, high creatine, protein, and urine, neurologic disorders, neuropathy, seizure disorders, hematologic disorders, hemolytic anemia, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia, immunologic changes, positive blood tests for anti-nuclear antibodies, neuropsychiatric disorders, anxiety, mood disorders, psychosis, cognitive dysfunction, and fatigue. Woo! Treatment of SLE. Management is complex and requires an interprofessional team with the goal to control disease activity and prevent organ damage. Pharmacological therapy includes NSAIDs, anti-malarial drugs believed to help reduce lupus-related symptoms of joint pain, rash, fatigue, and mouth sores, corticosteroids, immunosuppressive therapies such as erythropine and cyclosporine, biological agents such as Belamon, Non-pharmacological recommendations include protection from ultraviolet radiation, stress management such as medication, physical activity, physiological interventions to improve coping abilities, and any mental neuropsychiatric condition. Acupuncture, healthy diet, achieve and maintain a healthy weight. The dental hygiene care for SLE. Consultation with the interprofessional team is crucial to assess the level of immune suppression and any possible risk for dental care. Periodontal health must be carefully monitored due to the risk for steroid-inducing bone loss with long-term use of corticosteroids. Oral self-care education to aid the patient's optimal daily dental biofilm removal for management of gingivitis. Preventive services based on the oral disease risk and medications may include office home fluorides, diet counseling, and saliva substitutes. For patients with mobility and dexterity issues due to SLE-associated arthritis, modifications to oral self-care techniques and oral health aids may be required. For oral lesions, palliative treatment may be necessary, such as viscous lidocaine and then also tobacco cessation. The documentation. Record the chief complaint and compare findings with previous recordings, which may include intra- and extra-oral examinations, digital photos, and periodontal assessment. The patient with an autoimmune disease must provide their thorough health history, including any symptoms that may be affecting their oral health. Review all medications and document any oral side effects. Carefully document the medical provider's patient care recommendations. Record recommendations for oral self-care and treatment provided.